What is going on, guys? This dealer here back again with yet another RDX podcast. If you didn't know, if you knew by chance, you just you know don't give a fuck. I'm gonna tell you anyway. Uh, this is a weekly show where we tell you about all the latest and greatest in gaming. So thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, we've got so much to talk about here today. Uh, you know, and especially regarding a delay, a possible delay. I've been hearing some things behind the scenes. Not 100%, but we're going to find out. We're going to talk about it. And uh, like I said, tons of great topics. And we're going to start uh, by introducing the amazing panel of this show. Um, and, and we'll start with Cody Swift, man. What's going on with you? Hey, man. Uh, good. So excited. T today's going to be good because we've kind of already had a mini E3. So I'm excited to talk about all the news. <laughs> like a little yeah, pre-E3 yeah. game show. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about a couple different leaks. Some of them newer, some of them older, but all of it uh, great information. Or, well, I guess it depends on who you are. Fonza Rally, what's been going on, man? How you feeling? Uh, what's going on? How, how I'm feeling is irrelevant because I'm kind of sick right now, but I'm here for the show. I want to get it started, talk about these games, man. All right, we also got So Shady. Hello, everyone. Glad to be back. I'm, I am hyped for E3, a few short weeks away, just finished up ordering my E3 survival package consisting of a uh, at-home IV kit and a catheter bedpan combo. I don't plan on leaving YouTube for four days straight. I'll be watching everything, soaking it all in. I'm excited. <laughs> soaking it all in, literally. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. <laughs> We've also great. got uh, D Batch. I don't know if he's back yet. D, I'm there? back. I'm back. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, brother? I'm good, man. Man, today my son just got circumcised, so you know, dealing with all of that stuff. Oh wow! How specific? Yeah, I, I, I got, I I got that last week. As, as, as a man, though, oh, that was painful to watch, man. <laughs> Yes, you know me. I'm a way to random the podcast. podcast. <laughs> it's like the oddest intro. D, how you been, man? Where can people find you? My son's dick just got chopped off. <laughs> just, the, just the tip. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got to say, though, I am excited for today's show. We have so many topics to sink in. There's been a lot of a lot of news, unlike some of our past podcasts where the news has been slim. This week, there is a plethora of news. Yeah, there's a ton to talk about. And uh, speaking of ton, we got a ton of people already joining us live, guys. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed the show, consider, consider, consider sharing this bitch on Twitter, hitting that like button. The more you do that, the more you we start grow. over. No, I, I don't. I don't want to start over at all. I really don't. Uh, but I do want to give um, some sponsors a shout out real quick. Pay the bills. Uh, we got RDX sponsors in the patron. Uh, <clears throat> starting with the Darge Knight. Uh, we've talked to him several times on Twitter. And just so you guys know, we're, we got integrated topics and questions from some of these guys too. Uh, Mel S., uh, Chief Exec. We've also got Early uh, Mendenthal. And we've got Guillermo Cabello. Cabello. I try to pronounce that better and better each week, man. So thanks for putting up with my horrible pronunciation. As well as Lethal Papa. Thank you guys so much for powering the show. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, having your questions read on, on air and all that good stuff, check out the Patreon link down below. Starting with the first question from Lethal Papa regarding the 29 million sold. Okay, now this is kind of a big deal last week, and we're going to get into the, the, the better topics later on, but we do need to address this because Microsoft have actually uh, <laughs> they've taken a rocket launcher and blown some of the bullshit out of the air, huh, Colt? Yeah, they have. So yeah. what's, uh, what's the story there? They shot down the 29 million. Yeah, they just said it's not true. But, I mean, they didn't send out the uh, follow-up Tomahawk missile with, like, just the actual number. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah, like, they just kind of elbowed the media and goes, well, oh, that's not, that number is not accurate. Yeah, now they have my dumb motherfucker hit you, motherfuckers count. That's all they said. So, <laughs> hey, shout out to Jay Nice in the super chat. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. So, um, that's kind of the the most we can say on it for now. Uh, Lethal is, hey, this has been updated to an extent. Twenty nine million was shot down, but we already knew that didn't include any numbers from Asia or any numbers from this year, apparently. Uh, and they did like a million in February alone. They did, you know, it, I think. The fact that people think it's at 29 million and not more like 35 to 40 is kind of crazy to me personally. Go back to what you said the other day. You said uh, in November and December of 2017, just in North America, the Xbox One sales were almost 5 million. For like th anywhere from four, four, four to five, four, 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 four,
worldwide sales according to like VG charts has like their fake number they try to use. Like you can get the <laughs> ratio. Mo the majority of the sales for the Xbox are in North America, Canada, uh -huh. you know, Mexico, mm -hmm. United States, where Shady lives. In a <laughs> cardboard box. <laughs> so we need so, more. Yeah. We need more of those Tomahawk missiles, Microsoft. Send them out. Let's get some clarification, maybe. You know they're not going to do that, though. So, uh, Either way, thank you so much for your question, Aletha. We appreciate it being the first uh, sponsor question. Uh, Fonz, what, anything to throw out there regarding this number? I mean, do we even care at this point? The Wii U, the Wii destroyed everything last gen. Did we care then? Not really, right? Uh, no, um, I don't personally care, but at the end of the day, you know, this number was what it, it, it was said to be in December when this was recorded or whatnot, or EA did their little thing. Uh, it's gotta be at least 35 now. Um, and regardless, I don't care. I really mm -hmm. don't. So. Facts. All right. Uh, well, one more thing. One more thing. I was certain to write it in the chat, but, uh, Microsoft. Microsoft already confirmed uh, six, eight months ago that they had passed the 360 this far into the generation, which I think was 35 some million, 36 million, like eight months ago. Well, again, so, like you said, VG charts had it at like 37 million. I mean, last yeah, month. I mean, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, you're right, Fonz. It's what, the, what does it matter? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, top dog's not happy with two to one, so he's trying to make it three to one. <laughs> So, uh, shout out to Top Frog. Uh, shout out to Top Frog. Hey, that, that's another one. Shout out to everyone else as well. Uh, I wanted to get it out there real quick. Xbox unveiled a new controller aimed for those with disabilities. It might seem like a, a non thought to a lot of people out there, but I think this kind of stuff is important. Um, so it's designed sp specifically for the disabled. Uh, and it's, instead of two analog sticks, you've got kind of two track pads there. And it's all in one kind of square-shaped type controller. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures. Look it up if you haven't. But it's just another way they're trying to get more people into the game. And, and you can only imagine being somebody who maybe lost an arm, uh, you know, somewhere in a battlefield somewhere. And that gaming was their favorite thing in the universe before then. And they lose that ability to do that. And, and with this controller people like that can jump back into the game. So I just kind of want to put that out there and you guys that are uh, looking into this kind of stuff. It is, it is actually happening. And I think it's good news. Shady game pass, man. They lost 21 titles. <laughs> this uh -oh. they're losing 21 titles. Let's hear the uh, doom and gloom. 21 titles are out. Keep in mind people that as far as I know, they're only guaranteeing you a hundred titles at a time. Anything above that is gravy. <laughs> but there, there is 21 titles leaving. That's a big number. I tended to look at it as they were getting rid of the chaff to make room for hopefully higher quality games. There's only two Xbox One games out of the 21. That Blood are leaving. Bowl. Yeah, that are leaving. It's Blood Bowl 2 and uh, Defense Grid 2. So it's not huge there. And on the 360 front, uh, the big games that are leaving is the Bioshock Trilogy and Borderlands. The rest of the games, I'm not even going to bother to name because most people are going to be like, excuse me, come again. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah. So just basically a bunch of 360 stuff and then two I, Xbox One games. Yeah, two low-profile Xbox One games. All the big games are still on there. The Gears of Wars, of course. Anything Microsoft will stay forever. So yeah, you name a couple that, that have been given away on games of gold too so there's some carry over there yeah and wh mm. what's a good thing is that usually when they take games out they put a slew of new games in so expect new games to go in there right yeah 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 they, they added just, some more stuff too yeah. yeah at the end of march they added seven games and then they just pulled the 20 i didn't know it was 21 but yeah that's i mean they're well i think they're right around 150 and they're advertising xbox game pass as 100 games 100 plus so, yeah yeah It'll fluctuate, of course, up and down, but it'll be 100 minimum. Either way, we've seen uh, the frauds on Twitter overreacting to the... You know what? Why are people so confused by this? This is something we were talking about behind the scenes, uh, Shady. Why don't people understand? It's kind of like Netflix. Whether or not you know it, uh, Netflix gets rid of a fuck ton of stuff every month. And they, they pay someone else for their content. You know? They do, actually, and oftentimes when they leave, content will come back when new deals are struck with the owners of the rights to that content. I expect the same thing with Game Pass. We don't know what happens behind the scenes, how long these deals are, and um, I'm thinking they just make room for some new stuff to show up and rotate in and out for some things that are hot and what's not. 
Well, a, uh, speaking thing. of speaking of hot and what's not, Cliffy B, Bosky Studios, they both imploded into a billion pieces yesterday when Cliffy basically said, "Hey, uh, Bosky is no more." And um, you know, and this is the law the Lawbreakers team, by the way. Big surprise, but uh, the team has nobody wants to see people lose their jobs, so I don't want to see anyone spending that. But at the same time, I don't I don't remember anybody giving a damn about Balski Studios before, so we're not going to roll out the the red carpet and stuff. But I will say, they're uh, <laughs> they're uh, they're gone, they're gone, and, and Cliffy's moving on, trying to do something else. So, what do you guys think about Balski Lawbreakers, Cliffy, all this stuff going on? Well, he should come with some original ideas. So you know, I I gotta say, good riddance, because he wasn't just going to make another. Uh, Fortnite or um, PUBG clone was, well, he, was it that he was trying to make fonts? What was he trying to find? Uh, that next billion dollar franchise, and he'll be all right <laughs> once he finds it. I, that's I, a, that's I, a direct quote from Cliffy. That next billion dollar, not about it's not about what do I want to make? What am I passionate about? What do I think would be cool or innovate the industry? It's that next billion dollar franchise. And, he needed to be humbled. He needed to be humbled. Yep. But that's what, that's what got him to the dance, though. He 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 had a passion for Gears. Uh, you know, when he went into Gears, I don't think he was thinking, okay, this is going to be a huge billion-dollar franchise. He he made the game. He, he was in love with the game, and he put his passion into the game, and that's why it was so successful. And I think the success of that game got to his fucking head, and he's just been trying to uh, reproduce that. And uh, he needs to go back to the fundamentals of just making a game that's fun. If you make a game that's fun, the gamers will come. Mm -hmm. I've always said I find it hard to believe that that Lawbreakers, which is kind of like looks at often as an Overwatch clone of sorts, uh, I find it hard to believe that's the game he had always wanted to make. I just feel like he saw something that was going to be popular and uh, or tried to look at the trends and tried to make a game to fit it. You know that next billion dollar franchise. You know I feel bad for him because uh, how old is Cliffy? He's in his thirties, late thirties. I think he's fifty six. Uh, no, I mean, how old is he? 62? Because <laughs> you, guys are so, you guys are so mean. Uh, I, I kind of, I, I watch the things he says on social media and stuff, and I kind of feel bad for him because I feel like he's that guy that used to be like the super cool, popular, you know, in-demand developer, and and he's lost his way. He's, he's not relevant, and it's been really hard on him, and I see it in the way he reacts, and I think he needs the break, and... Mm -hmm. um, the, the last like you know last game that he tried to make that was like part of his dna was bullet storm even though a lot of you guys may not have liked that game that was like the last game that was part of the cliffy b um dna of what he did with unreal and and gears and stuff and he's just been so far gone from that you know it's got to be tough to be at that age where your your prime is gone i know it all too well my prime is long gone <laughs> <laughs> Cole, Cole so. he's actually only 43, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think he'll make a big comeback with a big game. I don't, Have you I, peaked yet, Fonz? You know <laughs> what? He might he might Michael Keaton it up. Come on now. No, yeah, hey, yeah, he's done, man. I, I don't think he's got that spark or that innovation anymore, unless yeah. somebody picks him up and, and brings him along in, for the ride or something. But I don't think he can come up with a great game again. He Let's needs to that. just try to, to figure out what he wants to see personally. Cause that's what made gear special. He added the crunch to the weapons and, and the little details. And, and we can't say Cliffy has no talent because no, no, no. he did start, uh, or, or essentially help lead a billion, you know, what is basically a billion dollar franchise in gears. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I wish the guy, well, I hope he reduces the size of his team and focuses on what he'd like to see, because that's what we're interested in. We're yeah. not interested in seeing overwatch, you know, point zero three. We want to see what Cliffy's ideas are. And that, he also you know, recently put out some of his ideas that they've been pitching that didn't go anywhere. So, Well, you're right, but sometimes people just get washed up in whatever industry they're in. Some people yeah. just don't have it anymore. He These are facts. Like, These are facts. Shady, you got anything to add to this? Yes, I do. All I know is that a smart man can learn more from their mistakes in life than their successes. And for better or worse, Cliffy B has been publishing and making games at a successful rate since he was like 16 or something like that. This is the mm -hmm. first time in the man's career that he's tasted the uh, what it's like to lose. And, and lose he, hard. And if he really wants to come back and he takes it serious, I think he can learn a lot of lessons from this and come back with something that is just amazing. He's got the talent and the name. Yeah, and the know-how, the experience, all that good stuff. So 
hopefully um, things work out for him. I know he was a dick face to a lot of people on this platform, but at the end of the day, it's a job, and we don't want to see people lose their jobs and fail and explode and die. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's Balski, that's Cliffy. We'll see what we see of him. Yeah, he's still relatively young, right, Fawn? So we'll see what this dude's got. No Borderlands 3D3 this year, Colt, confirmed by Gearbox. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Go ahead and get up on your desk and take a shit on your computer now. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, obviously, Gearbox is uh, taking the opposite road of, uh, of Aliens, Colonial Marines, and Duke Nukem. They're not half A in this, if you'll excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> I, they must be doing something really special with it because um, it's been almost, it's been way over a year that we saw that tech demo of kind of what the graphics improvement would be. Mm -hmm. so if we're not seeing anything at e3 that means we're not seeing the game until 2019 probably 2020 unless they want to break news at, at, at gamescom which they certainly know. can they i mean they they uh, borderlands game has like the punch and power to <coughs> don't late and come out like not long after like bethesda is done with fallout 4 and stuff uh. i mean i think allowed to do that i mean I that was i don't envy their position of having to find crazy new ways because what a lot of people don't understand is that destiny and all these other games they, they got a lot of their ideas from borderlands one yep and and the, the the responsibility of this team is under the pressure to innovate and find new ways to make their game cool to shit again is it just tremendously high it's hard to top borderlands too it just did everything right um mm -hmm. Not everybody's a big fan of the game, but I mean, they really nailed like that whole RPG and the loot system and the the open world and the way they did it. It was just great. It's one of my favorites. Well, uh, we wish them the best as well, and we'll get to anyone else in the panel here in a second. But I want to say thank you guys, 300 plus watching already. Guys, hit the like button if you can. Let's try to get 300 likes before the end of the show. It really helps. Uh, anyone else got a, an opinion on the Borderlands situation before we move on to uh, something I think is a little more interesting? It's a bit of a bummer not to see it. I would have liked to have seen it, but it tells me if it's not going to be there that they're going hard on it because games like Destiny, Division, and stuff like that up the ante on what that type of game could possibly offer, and they want to compete, if not dominate again. Yeah, they were. Borderlands 1 was crazy, like I said. So, Bond, you got, oh, you never played Borderlands. You're a fraud. I forgot. Yeah, no, I, I actually tried the other day, and I can't get into Borderlands, man. Not that original one, anyway. It was, it's just way too dated. Yeah, it probably, yeah, yeah, I'd imagine it came out in, what, 2010 or something, so. It's almost a decade old. You know what's not a decade old, though, uh, is State of Decay 2. I wanted to talk about this real quick. This is the last RDX we'll have before the game comes out. For me, it comes out Thursday night. For the rest of you uh, on Game Pass or Standard Edition owners, it'll hit Monday night, I do believe, the 21st, 11 p.m. Uh, my time. And, and uh, what can I say? I'm fucking excited to play this game. Massive fan of the first one. I want to know what you guys think in the chat and the comments after the show renders. What do you think the game is going to review at? The review embargo lifts Thursday. Keep this in mind. So we're getting a lot of stream stuff in today. Review embargo re releases Thursday. Fonz, where do you think it's going to come in at? Metascore across the board. I think about 80. I think it'll get an 80. It'll be decent. 80 is good, by the way. Yep. yep. Colt. 78. 78? You yep. <laughs> no, I've just, I've just, I've just seen how, how it rolls. I think uh, that's, that's a solid guess for me. Let us know in the live chat what you think. And I'm super excited to play it, too. I just, I've just kind of seen how things are... <laughs> Peeking out of the uh, out of the bottom of the pant leg, man. I've this been turd said a thirty three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the chat. The chat's saying seventy eight, uh, 90, 80, 77, 72. I think a lot of you guys, if you had experience, the first game did very well critically and sold over five yes. million. So keep that in mind. Uh, what do you? <laughs> what's up, Daz? Uh, what do you think, D Batch? What do you think this is going to come in at? Is hopefully not a thirty three. I think it'll do eighty four. 84. There's a little bit more realistic expectation there. Shady. I think that's a commander to 78.1. I'd like to know what I win as well. There's no way Colts win it now. Don't win jack shit. Honestly, oh. it, it, it could really be 75 to 80. That's that's where I put it. I, I think that's a comfortable number, too. I could totally. Yeah. You know. I totally see it around the 80, 82 meta score. The PC version of the original is at a 79. The Xbox <clears throat> One version is at a 72. But I mean, it's an old remaster for 
from 360. So yeah, that was like an old ass game that didn't look or run good when it came out originally on the 360. What's the score at on 360 though when it first I, came? I'm about to check right now. I think it should be higher for sure. But yeah, we got a lot of uh, answers in the chat. Seventy-eight. 78. Okay, yeah. well, I thought it was maybe an eighty-two. The first one, maybe. Well, but keep in mind, you've got co-op. They've added a lot more um, immersion, a lot more improvements and visual upgrades. And yeah, I mean, it's we should see a bigger, better score. Yeah. I, don't know. Well, I think we have to keep in mind that the microscope lens feels a lot more zoomed in this time on the Microsoft yep. games than it did back then. Yeah, that's kind of totally what I'm agree. getting at without being like too. Uh, you know, tinfoil hat, but I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I would be right there with Fonz at around an 80, but you know, I just kind of, <laughs> for my expectations, the way it kind of rolls for Microsoft. I mean, I don't think games get, I have no games don't get like a 10 point downgrade for being Xbox games because, no. because the most of the Xbox exclusives, you know, they pan out around a 81 to 84 percent. So, yeah, that's bull crap. They'll be. Colby Johnson in the chat says, 95, game of the generation. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Best part is he could be completely right because if that's your opinion, that's your opinion. Yep. Yep. But just for those that are saying, oh, 75, it's going to suck. Remember half of your uh, games for years on PS4 were below that. So 75 doesn't suck. I, that's my point. Like uh, <laughs> you know. 75 isn't, isn't a bad score, just so people know. So, I mean, if you're at a 71, 70, like, then you're starting to get like, okay, this motherfucker barely studied for the test, you know? So, either way, State of the K2, <laughs> getting hyped for it. Um, we've also got some Xbox One X deals for those that are curious, looking around for some good sales. Uh, you, you can find it for 100 bucks off um, here in the States anyway. So, if you're looking for an X and you want to get it up for 100 bucks off, uh, Google that, find out where these deals are, because apparently there's a few different places um, who was it? Red Dragon. I think it's Red Dragon. He said, and shout out to Red Dragon. Uh, he says, finally priced at what it's actually worth. And I just, <laughs> I just have to say, um, oh my in, in his opinion, that might be the case because he's a PC guy, really. He's been a PC guy for years. But for a console owner, I mean, the 4K Blu ray player alone by itself makes up the difference between that and the pro, in my opinion. I use that fucking thing. So uh, it really just depends on who you are. If you're a console guy, then. And uh, I think you'll probably be blown away by the visuals, wouldn't you say, Fonz? Yep, that's true. Mm. So, Miso so. Newbie said that the link that Red Dragon posted for the Xbox One X sale was sold out. Hmm. Hmm. Well, hopefully uh, there's some more out there because that's some pretty pretty good results. But uh, in either case, uh, opinions aside. Mixer, <laughs> somebody asked Mikey Barr, hey, um, you know, we're going to talk about this God of War thing too on the, the, PS, the Mixer giveaway. They're giving away a fucking PS4 Pro. It's kind of odd. What? But uh, uh, this is Mike, why somebody asked Mikey Barr, hey, uh, when are you going to bring Mixer to uh, PlayStation? And Mike just said, when they allow it, meaning Sony don't allow Mixer because it's a Microsoft platform on the PlayStation, um, which I guess you could, you could justify that if you wanted to. But um, they want to bring Mixer to PlayStation. And furthermore, they're doing this God of War giveaway, this PS4 Pro giveaway on Mixer, right, Fonz? Yeah, why wouldn't they want to put their Mixer on everything? You know what I'm saying? Because it, at the end of the day, it's a streaming service competing with the likes of uh, mm -hmm. Twitch. I mean, yep. come on. I mean, that's the problem that are, with being uh, in so many places is, is sometimes you got to lay, lay in bed with a competition, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think people are just too focused on the console war all the time. They don't understand that, you know, business is key at the end of the day for these companies. Making money is what they strive to do. So I, I don't know. People have a problem with some companies making money, I guess. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Just bring me the games and I'm happy. <laughs> D, what do you think about this? Um, yeah, like the rest of the panel, it's, it's, it's good for business. They need to make money. However, I don't really see the reason why they need to give away a PS4 on Mixer. Like, oh man. Uh, you think that's them directly trying to reach out to the Sony guys and, and letting them know that Mixer exists and, and, you know, I don't know why else would they, right? Maybe I, it's I, the thing I, to give I, away. I, hey, to, to have Mixer on, on, you know, 
PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, wherever the hell they want to have it. That's fine. I understand that from a business standpoint. But just stop promoting your competition. Like, <laughs> like why yeah. are you giving away a PS4? Like, officially? Like, what the hell? Let's hear well, it, D. Let's hear it. Then. When's the last time you saw that? When's the last time you saw that Samsung executive uh, hyping up a fucking Zenith? <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, but but yeah, we got we got a new uh, service that's gonna be going on the LG TVs and uh, yeah, support the LG TVs. No, they're not gonna do that shit. They're, even if they they had a service on the LG TVs, they wouldn't be promoting LG. They, they would just be getting that money from LG, it, right? They would just unleash the app and let it hit the platform and and reap the rewards. But but the difference is, Sony won't even allow the Microsoft app on the console. Their consumers want Mixer on PlayStation, so. I, just, I really don't care unless we, you know what, just focus on games. Give me the games. I don't care if you give away a freaking Ouya, okay? <laughs> give away whatever you want. Give me games. You remember think, when people were hyping that damn little fucking piece of shit up and, and oh, traditional games are dead. It's going the way of the Ouya, I tell you. And then oh, that fucking gosh. thing died about three minutes into its life cycle. I don't know if you guys remember that, but the Ouya yeah. was kind of a big deal. Back yeah. then. It was an open source Android, Android or box. Little Android box and it played, you know, little pieces of shit and people ate the shit and then they spit it out and like, hang on, where's the real games? And that thing just died. And it, how far we've come from analysts saying that tablets and mobile are going to go console to the ouya, you know, the independent console, the fucking up and comer, you know, and and now none of it's a thing. It's, be it's because powerful hardware with great looking graphics and big AAA like huge <laughs> games are what drive the industry. And it's what keeps these developers building these awesome games that um, if, if we didn't have consoles, I think sometimes, you know, I, I don't think consoles are the be all end all, obviously, but, but uh, I think even the PC gets to benefit from big games with, with developers like Ubisoft developing like these big games because the console market's so huge, you know, they kind of develop a certain type of experience that everybody gets to enjoy if they've got the hardware. Mm -hmm. so it's good i want games to keep going that way if games moved away from like those the third person open world action or the first person like in your face shooter and and these awesome racing games if, if games went to a different thing and only like mmos and puzzle games like i would be done this is why i game i like a certain type of game yep i mean you know games appeal to different people so you got people that swear up and down by persona you got others that wouldn't yeah. look at it and fear exploding into flames like it's just <laughs> how it is like and, and that's perfectly fine but let us know what you think in the chat um should they promote mixer and try to give away ps4s or do you think maybe they should do like you know a fucking adidas executive doesn't go around you know uh, hyping up or, or even or uttering the word nike like it's kind of weird but I kind of understand where they're coming from. They have services. They have apps. They have things that they want to have access to another 70 million people. Let, so. me, give you an, let me give you an old man story here. When I was younger, I worked for Coca-Cola, and they told me, you're not allowed to go eat at Taco Bell or KFC and like some other restaurant. Are you and kidding? I, yeah, I said, why? You're not allowed to go in there when you're, um, when you're in your uniform because – uh, Taco Bell only has Pepsi machines, the fo the fountain machines. So they said, just don't go into Taco Bell, don't go into KFC and and whatever the other place was. Obviously, you know, you got the coat guy with like the red and white striped shirt, and then <laughs> mm, Mountain Dew. Hey, yeah. wait a minute. So they they told you not to do that. They did that seriously. Yeah, they told yeah, but, me that. But you got to understand, Colt. When when a company has services, let, let's say they you guys made the machines they were pouring their Pepsi through, you would be able to go in there just fine. I mean, yeah, there's there's services out there that these companies have, and they want to promote. And uh, yeah, I, I so there's totally a difference. I totally get it. Yeah, and we always have to remember, like, the Mixer team is totally isolated away from whatever team is going to develop the next AAA big budget exclusive on Xbox. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, to, to, to bring that up, at, like, in a Mixer conversation and say, why aren't you guys working on the games? We're like, oh, uh, Jerry does that, man. Oh, it's over here. We're just working on the mix on the latest. I bring Jerry sandwiches. I don't even – Jerry does that. I, yeah, it's like the update team. How come they're not making more? It's like, don't worry about updates, make games. Well, they're the update team. They get paid to do that. They have nothing to do with the fucking games. And all these head guys at these companies, these CEOs and stuff, they all hang out and everything. <laughs> and they're not fighting this console war like these people are on, on oh, yeah. Yeah. YouTube. It's, it's ridiculous. Stop.
Hmm. Well, uh, hey, we got to give a shout out to well over 400 people watching live. Already hit that like button if you can. Let's try to get the three in front of the end of the show. We got uh, some really good topics coming up. Thank you guys so much once again uh, just for doing what you do. Inside Xbox episode three to debut May 17th. Uh, and they did give it a little teaser on uh, this weekend Xbox on the Xbox YouTube channel. We knew it was going to be about State of Decay 2. Um, Colt, you still expecting Crackdown 5 news? No, because you'll hit me if I say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Last time you smacked me upside that. Well, hopefully they'll show it. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> well, I just feel like we know what it is. Like it's just like the old inside Xbox with, with more of a budget. You yep. know? Uh, but you know, I, I just figured I'd get the date out there in case you guys didn't know. It's it's very soon. Let us know what you think about that uh, and what you're expecting. I'll give you a cheat sheet. Expect a fuck ton of State of Decay 2 behind the scenes with uh, Major Nelson breakdancing with one white glove. Uh, other than that, that's about it. Uh, think, Fa go ahead, D. I think that one might actually be good because that's going to be the lead up to E3. So I think they might have a few little interesting tidbits on that show, you know, to get us more hyped up for E3. D. I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking more thinking. the other way. The other way. I think it's because it's so close to E3, it's going to be the lightest of the three shows. Well, that wanted something out of the last two, and I'm disappointed. They're going to go and hang themselves after this one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's a little unreasonable, Shady, uh, for people to expect so much out of a, what was a little tiny show before it went off the air a long time ago? They brought it back with a little more of a budget. It does essentially the same damn thing, but it's just upgraded to where they show behind the scenes with, with more of their more re recent stuff. Do you think it's unreasonable to expect E3 announcements, especially so close to E3? Yeah, unreasonable is putting it uh, politely, man. I don't think we can expect that type of thing at all from this show. It's not what it's there for. It's to basically and give you an extended commercial and look at what is coming up in the next 30 days before the next episode of Inside Xbox. That's all it is. Ah, well right, right before E3, don't expect anything huge. It's going to be a long commercial for State of Decay 2. Mm. And I'm you know what? That. I'm going to watch every minute of it. Yep. Every minute. I think it comes out that night. Yeah, it comes out that night. So I'll watch uh, Inside Xbox that day, State of Decay. I'll go see Deadpool 2 that night, and then play state of decay 2 that day that uh, speaking of state of decay 2 did you guys watch those um little short cinematic uh trailers that they had for the story of the different characters yep mm -hmm. that that shit was so well done man the guy with the axe ha! Yeah, it, was, it, it was it was it was well it, it kind of gave me that walking dead vibe i can't even lie mm -hmm. uh, i was gonna say dealer the release date for your edition the ultimate edition of state of decay 2 on friday i've heard is one o'clock in the afternoon eastern time that was before uh, I got That's pushed. I got pushed up last time I looked, seventeenth at eleven p.m. Okay. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Um, Fonz, <laughs> why am I calling you on you on this one? This is a uh, shadow of the Tomb Raider stuff. I want to run through real quick. Um, <laughs> but it does kind of pertain to the AAA or quadruple A budgets thing for a little bit because <clears throat> shadow of the shadow of the Tomb Raider's budget is rumored to be around a hundred million dollars. Uh, the Tomb Raider boss. Tease is a big surprise to C3. Says traversal uh, in platforming is going to be amazing. And uh, let me let me hear your take on this, Fonz, because you weren't like the biggest fan of Rise of the Tomb Raider story. You liked the first one or 2013's more. Yeah. But what do you think when critics come at it? And the first thing you know they say when somebody's like, "So what do you think about Shadow of the Tomb Raider?" They're like, "Well, it just feels like more Tomb Raider." What's the first thing that you think? Uh, I think the same mechanics, same, you know, abilities, same, you know, uh, RPG elements, that sort of thing. Mm hmm. Anything else? Uh, graphics, maybe. Okay. Do, do you think, okay, maybe these people are fucking stupid because there's a reason we liked Rise of the Tomb Raider so much, and it's because eh, it felt like Tomb Raider. Yeah. Like, yeah. they say it in a negative light. Like, oh, it just feels like more kind of Rise of the Tomb Raider with more improvements. Oh, so it feels like every sequel ever. That's yeah, true. Much. Yeah, that's yeah. not damage control either. That's dang true. And uh, how that's, 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 that's the same thing we heard with State of Decay as well with, with Part 2. Oh, it feels like more of the same. Like, okay, that's a good thing. That's what I want. Yeah, that gameplay loop. Why it might feel tedious to some. Like, and they go, they say, this feels repetitive. And they go play fucking Destiny. I'm just oh, blown away. <laughs> They've spent. Uh, they're they're saying rumored uh, up to a hundred million dollars on this next game. 
And if people don't know, I mean, that's that, that's going to be a quality game because Rockstar spent about that for Red Dead Redemption. Um, it was rumored to be $100 million as well. So that's what it takes to make these quality games, apparently. So let's do it. Let's, let's pour it in there. They Come on. $265 million on GTA V. Yeah, well. So uh, if there ever was a quadruple-A game, and an yeah, example but- budget. It's GTA Five so yeah, far. But look at look at what they've reaped in for GTA Five billions, <laughs> yeah, billions. So that's why I bring up the quadruple A thing because a lot of people are, are uh, what were they they on my video about this? They're like, well, you do know that these games are this, right? You know they're already up there because of hundred million dollars. I'm like, well, if you listen, which some of you fucking people that just stumble into my videos just to leave bad comments about the uh, a console that you don't even play. You, you'd hear me say that it's well over a hundred million dollars. So that could be fucking, you know, 200 million. You just don't know. So the fact that they're opening up a top tier budget, budget wise, and this is another comment, just cause it's got a lot of money behind it. Don't mean it's gonna be good. That's absolutely true. But who the fuck said otherwise? No one said it would be good no matter what, no, but yeah. a bigger budget never hurt uh, no. good talent. Give good talent, a bigger budget. What do they make? They make fucking amazingness. And they so, have a rush. You, you eliminate rush when you, uh, when you give them a little more money and more time. So. And also, too, when you have a, a higher budget, you can get the top guys in, in the industry because you can fucking pay for them now, right? <laughs> then you make Infinity War, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that film was rumored to be almost $400 million, but they've already made, they're going to make like four times that easy worth, just in box office. Worth every single penny. I saw that movie on Friday. Man, I'll, I'm not going to ruin for those that haven't seen it, but that ending, oh, it's a, it just stabs you in the heart, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a lot of goats died. A lot oh, of man, my <laughs> goats for, my goats for I've got, I've got a. Uh, you really went all in on that one, D. I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got an RDX uh, sponsor topic here. Not necessarily a question, because some people that are in that tier don't don't really have a topic or or a question per se. But they're like, hey, here's a good topic. I want to hear you guys talk about. So this one is Mel S. Chief Exec. He said he sends me a link about possibly next generation PSVR tech. Um, there is a company called J- Japan Displays. Uh, they are launching new high-end screens for what is going to be used for VR. The company is Sony, Hitachi, and Toshiba backed, and uh, they are producing new displays that destroy PSVR's current specs. PSVR now, the pixel density is around 386 PPI, pixels per square inch. This new technology is around 1,000 PPI, and uh, they're saying this could be used for the next PSVR. So Top Dog is the only guy in the history of this channel that I've heard hype VR up. He's obsessed with it for some reason. Um, <laughs> let us know what you think, Top Dog, because uh, you're the only guy here that cares. So I think uh, personally, I think that that's that's pretty good, man. Um, VR, I, I love VR. Um, you know, the only thing that could take you out of VR sometimes is like the screen door effect, and with a higher pixel density and higher resolution, you know, you're getting to that you know more realistic you know more real life kind of vibe that you could get in vr i just ordered the uh, oculus go i should be getting it tomorrow i'm gonna do a review probably friday on it uh, and i think this vr headset's what's gonna really make it go mainstream because it's only 200 dollars. you you can get you know the basic headset with 32 gigs of uh, memory for 32 dollars, and that's a cheap price for anyone that was on the fence on vr to jump in you know and and, and take the chance on it so I, I think vr is is the future of gaming i just think the price point of it is what turns a lot of people off and the fact that it still has wires fortunately the oculus go doesn't have any wires so you know it's a standalone unit but once um VR becomes more affordable and it goes completely wireless where you don't need to set up all these um, tracking bases where it has the inside out tracking and it's wireless and it's cheap. I, I think VR will really be more mainstream. D For is now, VR's awesome. I, I can't lie. VR is fucking awesome. D is VR on like an uphill like increase in popularity. It, I mean, the, as much as we don't hear about it, it almost seems like it's just kind of slowly uh, fizzling out or to leveling out, but I'm not in the know. Is VR yeah, it's, like it's yeah, it's steadily it, increasing? Yeah, it's steadily increasing. Of course, you got the you got the these new window mixed reality devices, which are are more affordable than, like, than the Oculus Rift and the um, HTC Vive. And of course, like I just mentioned, the Oculus Go is just 
$200 and it actually has um, better resolution than the Oculus Rift. Now, of course, you know, you're not going to get the same graphics as, you know, the PC counterpart for the games, but for like <laughs> media consumption, you know, and, and like light gaming, it's fantastic at $200. And, you know, like I said, the price of VR is a little high. So a lot of gamers are turned off by that. But yeah. I can guarantee you, when gamers actually try VR, they're going to fall. Nine out of 10 of them are going to fall in love with it. VR, it's, it's, it's 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 such an experience. I can't. They're gonna puke everywhere, or you're gonna, everywhere or you're gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. well, well, you know what? They're, they're they're getting much better with that too because the Oculus Go it has like you know a medium setting, you know a high setting. So you have different settings, you know, for your tolerance, so you can actually avoid that you know nauseating feeling. I still think mm -hmm. they're doing it wrong. If if you were gonna buy a VR headset and it just played, it worked with most of your games, like it just integrated itself. Like that's what we're looking for because we basically you have to play by vr's rules and that's my issue with i don't want to knock it and tell people not to get vr i already did that in the past and that's counterproductive but like for me um to play by vr's rules kind of like what you do with connect games motion control like you don't really do the you don't really interact with the game you kind of have to play it by its rules and you play certain games that only you know vr can do and i know we'd all like to see vr jump to like all of our games I, at least i would yeah, I I agree with you that, but there's some things too, like the uh, the Oculus Rift, like you can hook it up to your Xbox, and then you can you know virtualize yourself in a you know hundred foot theater. You know, you're playing your games on that screen, and it's like you really. You feel know like what VR is, is super good. Um, on Orn? podcast is putting motherfuckers to sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I got. I got to be that guy that moves things forward because oh I'm dying. Gosh. I'm fucking literally aging at 800 times the rate. So uh, I do want to go ahead and, and just get it moving. Hey, VR, it's a cool, interesting idea. But any idea Top Dog's a giant fan of, I have to take a second look at. It and be like, yeah. eh, I don't know. Let me. I, I was going to say I was dry heaving at the topic. <laughs> okay. Well, Before jump we in. jump off this topic, though, have any of you guys tried VR? I mean, we're not, I'm not saying it's not fucking great, but I'm just saying it's boring as fuck to listen to. So, you know, um, VR is cool. The technology <laughs> is very, very interesting. You know, I'm into this shit too, D, but at the same time, motherfuckers is dying. So I'm trying to save lives here. So <laughs> I do want to go ahead and, and push it towards games. Anthem, Bioware making an update on Anthem saying, hey, we're going to solve the age old problem of multiplayer and story. This is a game that you can play with your friends. Anthem, what do you expect to see the C3? Is it going to be on the Microsoft stage, D? Hell yeah, it's going to be on the Microsoft stage, and I think they're going to probably have a kick-ass co-op mode. Uh, it's four-player co-op, right? Loot-driven, all that good shit. Yeah I, 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 yeah, I think it's going to be on the stage, and I think it's going to be one of these games that really demonstrates what the X is capable of doing. And I'm looking forward to, like, what they showed last year was fantastic, and, like, you know, that was far from the final version. So I can't wait to see what the game looks like this year at E3, man. It should be fantastic. Uh, real quick, so I can uh, not have to remember this, because uh, well, <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of Super Chaz and stuff. I'm, like, trying to multitask more, but... Uh, uh, why nine power? Thank you so much for the super chat. It says, do you guys think JRPGs will do JRPGs will do well at E3? Good show, dealer. Thank you. Good show to the rest of the panel as well. Um, do you think JRPGs are gonna do good at E3, Shady? I think they're gonna do fine. A lot of people like them. It's a niche crowd, like any game is a niche crowd, but there is a market for that, and there's been few and far between on Xbox. So for the fans of those games on this platform, they're coming. They're gonna do well. That's an open floor. Anybody else want to add to this? You think it'll do well? Maybe it'll be a flop. Maybe it'll be some weird shit. What See J a five-year-old kid with cat ears saving the world and shit. What do you think? What JRPGs are in the uh, pipeline? You know, I, I really don't know what's coming out. I know of uh, Final Fantasy VII, but that ain't coming out till 2029 or something. Uh, 2029. You know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They, they should do well. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, what they're going to show, I think Y9 Power... To answer your question definitively, for me anyway, what they're going to show is going to work for fans of JRPGs. But if you're not, it won't. You know, that's the best way I can put it. Um, yeah. But uh, we were talking about Anthem. Colt, Anthem, your thoughts? What, what do you expect to see? Uh, they solving the problem of multiplayer-driven story games, or vice versa, rather. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, they're probably well aware uh, to avoid what went wrong with Andromeda. Uh, hopefully it steers far away from what we felt in destiny and, and the division. Um, I'm one of those, I'm not as uh, hyped about 
anthem as most people are and we haven't seen a whole lot of the game yet but um i don't know i'm just gonna wait to see what microsoft shows because I'm, I'm pretty sure that i'm they've got the marketing rights to it i'm pretty sure right yeah i think i so, think it's gonna be yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna i'm holding all of my expectations other than what i just said until e3 to see what they actually show we got it. We got Schmitter Gaming in the super chat. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Thank you so much. He says, thanks for keeping me entertained in Germany. We got a lot of different people from a lot of different regions. I get uh, comments from Nigeria and just all over the place. So once again, guys, thanks for staying up at fucking five in the morning or whatever it is and checking out the show. Some of you dudes are in the future. Maybe you can tell us about tomorrow's leaks. I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just want to talk a little bit about EA since we're on that topic. Uh, did you guys notice that they put into the backwards compatible uh, games uh, Fight, Fight Night? Night? Fight Night Champion. Uh, yes. Now, that- my problem was I couldn't find it on the store, but people in the UK could. So maybe it's up there now. It's just probably just the time difference, right? Yeah, it's been a few hours since that. that- little- that is an awesome fan service. Everyone has been uh, looking forward, you know, to a new fight night. And I think this is great fan service uh, on their side. Now, are we going to get the enhancements with the X with this title, or is it just going to be straight how it used to be? Uh, regular. Okay. But nonetheless, it, that game looked fantastic back in the day. That's one of those games that still actually holds up. It was a great looking game. I, I can't wait to play it again. By the way, speaking of Bioware and EA um, and Anthem, I, I love the way that they uh, they tried to say that they they've figured it out you know they're gonna put this put the story in there <laughs> co-op well guess what destiny 2 has already done that like Not other correctly. games have done that but he, no but this is already solving the problem it. according to them well solving uh, what problem exactly besides it being a dog shit story in destiny 2 well Honestly. apparently uh i don't know uh you know what i have faith in bioware keep in mind that's not the mass effect andromeda team that's the Dragon Age Inquisition, Mass Effect 1, 2, 3 team. Uh, okay. KOTOR, you know, this is the good team. Yes, so I'm going to least- give them the benefit of the doubt. What they showed was definitely the highlight of last E3 to most people. Anthem was looking fire, and that was running on an Xbox One X. They confirmed that. Uh, so I'd only imagine it looks better, and uh, it's supposed well, to come out this year. Of course. Oh, yeah. Of course, but Unlike yeah. the rest of you guys, my excitement level for Anthem is through the roof last year's footage (laughs) last year's footage i was like that nazi at the end of indiana jones when they cracked open the ark of the covenant (laughs) face melting all fucking (laughs) it was hardcore i couldn't believe what i was seeing i want more i am hoping for the world i want this game to redefine to me what a looter shooter is it looks fantastic i'm hyped Shady, I'm glad you're hyped, but I dial it back a bit because <laughs> it, I'm, prepared to let down. I'm prepared to let down. That's fine. Well, I, love, I love Bioware. I love Bioware. I love their games and stuff, but it's EA we're dealing with now. And EA is can ruin this game with just something so simple as microtransactions. But EA saved EA like took Mass Effect like over the roof from a great first game to mass effect 2 like where they really retooled the combat and just made it like the super visceral game but i mean that was 10 yep, years that was, ago that was pre microtransactions you know pre like the the pay for every little thing you oh know? my gosh yeah you know yeah i don't know um you know I, i'm always against microtransactions but hopefully these publishers can find a way to just um I don't know, substitute some of the losses they might have on a production budget and, and kind of just accept that as a casualty of development because they're making so much on microtransactions because they're not going anywhere. EA no. already said that that we're doing this. Fuck your fucking all your shit. We're doing it. We don't care what laws you have. Um, I don't know. I just that, that whole thing. is. Annoying. I will say, though, that Bioware knows that this is sort of a make or break for them. And because, it, I mean, EA could get rid of this whole company if they don't do well with this game. They've done it before with companies. So mm-hmm. I think they know that. And I think they're putting everything into this. So I'm I'm really hoping this is a good game. But they also, something happened with Star Wars that they didn't, didn't, didn't count on, Battlefront 2. Um, they didn't know that they made something that they were just going to get rammed up their own ass. Like Star Wars... <laughs> changed things for ea they lost three billion in stocks alone i do believe when that game launched because of its situation so if that's not a beacon for change or at least find a different snake ass fucking way to try to crawl up my ass and get all my money then (laughs) you better you know hopefully that's their signal to to change things up 
and to try to come back with actual paid story driven DLC like Mass Effect had. Mass Effect 2 had a bunch of little side missions and expansions you could buy, you know. Maybe expand on that. I don't mind buying good content that it that lengthens the life of an already pretty long game. You know, Top Dog every week, man. He's all every time we mention games, he's like Fight Night Z. Like, <laughs> what Red Dead Z, <laughs> Anthem Z, Mass Effect Z, what? VR, yay! Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Oh my god. Stop fraud. We're trying to be lenient here, bud, but you're really you're pushing it, man. The only thing you love is VR. It's like I'm just trying to figure it out here. What game do you love, Top Rod? Let us know in the comments while we move on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we do got... <laughs> Go ahead, Gold. I was going to say there's that game on the Nintendo Switch where you... I don't even want to say these creepy games that these people okay, play. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Not, <laughs> let's not do that. Shower with your daddy, too. Oh, God. That's a real game. Just for those... The, Fonz isn't a weirdo. That's a, He's a weirdo. He's a weirdo, but that's yeah. a real game. <laughs> Shower with your dad too is a real game on PC. No, there's not a sequel. What? I mean, uh, oh, no, no, it's, only, it's just one. Okay, Cole, yeah. you sound upset. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dang it, there's no sequel. We're waiting. E3. Now, Cyrus Berg in the super chat says, "Fonz, if Anthem turns out to be a great game with microtransactions uh, that don't break the game." How would you feel? Shout out to the panel. Thank you so much, Cyrus. I, I would feel fan fucking tastic, man. Look, I don't care if people want to spend their money on certain things, but if it doesn't, because if it doesn't harm the game in any way or harm my experience, I don't care. Buy away, buy what you want. But yeah, uh, that's that's the way I look at it. Well, so, so as, as long as they're not game breaking, you'll, uh, you'll yeah, you know, have a little bit of course, yeah. man. Like, come on, we know that Red Dead Redemption 2's multiplayer is going to have some microtransactions, but if it doesn't bother me, I'm cool. Hmm. Well, um, I, I got to move topics because we got the best stuff yet to come. And shout out to uh, our next RDX sponsor, uh, patron the Dirge Knight. He had a really good question regarding Crackdown 3. Now, keep this question in mind as we talk about this topic. Did Phil Spencer in increase Crackdown's development budget? to include a battle royale mode. Now, this all comes from Crackdown 3, and it's, uh, well, the stuff they hit yesterday. Uh, I did a video on this. They're talking about Crackdown 3. A source talked to a developer for a lengthy uh, amount of time and said, hey, um, this game was actually intentionally delayed from November 7th, 2017 uh, to increase its development budget, add more features, potentially more game modes, things like that, because Phil wants to see the game be a very viable franchise into the future. He doesn't want this thing to come out and flop. He realizes that, hey, what we have now is okay or good. I want to make it great. So he's pushed it to some time in 2018. I want to get into that further here in a minute. But do you guys think that that's a possibility? Dirge Knight wants to know, uh, maybe he delayed it for something like a, a Battle Royale mode with that destruction in the multiplayer that we've seen. That'd be a pretty cool mode to have in Crackdown yeah. with the full destruction because from what I've heard, all the interiors of every building has to be legit with every floor, all the rooms, offices, bathrooms, stuff like that. They're not just empty rectangles like most games. Yeah, keep going, high. keep going, Shady. And after Shady, I want each of you to give your opinion. I'll be right back. Give me two minutes. No, okay. minute. I mean, it's pretty sweet that you could, in theory, be like in the middle of a 54, uh, 50 floor skyscraper, sorry, and guys are punching up through the floors to come and get you while other guys are coming up through the ceiling or down through the ceiling. There's just a lot of potential there for a mode like that. I think it'd be cool. Yeah. It sounds like that. How the heck could they even get that to work? I mean, it sounds like a nightmare uh, of technology to get, you know, 100 people in a huge city that could be totally destroyed. You know, uh, piece by piece. Like, if you've watched that destruction footage, like, like Shady said, like there are you can shoot out girders and beams and columns, and the thing will collapse. Like, in much more a of a detail that we watched on um, Red Faction Guerrilla. You know, that game had really great destruction, and um, but you know they kind of simplified buildings to do what it could do in that open world. So that if that. Destruction works the way like they're advertising. And, you know, in 2015, the devs said they had free reign on that multiplayer and it worked as advertised. So, yeah, I mean, that could be a huge thing in gaming like we've never seen before. About that 100 players, I think we're going to start to see battle royale modes come out that have a lot less 
than 100 players. I think that's just the number that everyone's running with because that's what PUBG oh, yeah. set the standard. So with different play modes, different map sizes, things like that. I mean, even PUBG and Fortnite, they don't really get good until you're in the top 20, top 10. Well, Before that, within 20, 30 seconds of landing, 30 guys are dead on average. So Yeah, a 25-man <laughs> battle royale. My, D, what do you think about this? I, you know what? I, I, I think it'd be a good idea. It would help sell the game, that's for sure, because, you know, that game's going to need all the help it can get. Like, I, I do like the cloud elements of the game, though. I, I remember watching a GDC a couple of years ago. Like, they had one of the characters, like, in front of a wall, and he was just, like, punching out little parts of the wall, and he would see little parts of it crumble, crumble. And then, you know, the, the whole structure would just fall afterwards. So I, I think if they had added a battle royal mode with, you know, the fully destructible world and and buildings and you know i think it'd be great you know just it'd be fun just taking out the beams in these buildings and just watching the building slowly crumble you know uh, i, I want to know something from the chat real quick do you do you think uh and we've kind of talked about this too but when every game you know call of duty is going to have it battlefields remember to have it battle rail is going to be everywhere it's going to be a yeah. standard game mode uh and do you think this can be played out by time this happens because no. that's kind of yeah. like I don't think so. I think I think this is the next step because you know we've had multiplayer, you know, team versus team, you know, sudden death, all these different modes. We've had these modes forever, and people still been eating up these multiplayer games. So I, I think the battle royal mode will actually make multiplayer even more popular. A predator has a good point. He says, um, it, in the tech demo, I showed this in my last video. If you want to see the most fucking ridiculous destruction, I show all the best parts. Uh, and what Crackdown was doing in 2015, this is a 2015 tech demo I show in this video. Um, it's nuts the thing they're doing with this. They're taking a pistol and carving out a hole in the wall, and the, the center of the hole, the center of the wall falls out when he's usually yeah. around it. And, and just the building when it falls into another building, and how, just how crazy it is, all power, powered by the servers uh, and, and ba the cloud is what that is. And They're what's cool is all that debris stays; it doesn't leave. Like, yeah, everything it takes, in the up, game, takes so. up a lot of memory. Right. And yeah. stuff. As a result, earlier says that, that the reason that that was so easy for them, too, was because they dialed up all the weapons in that tech demo. So you might not be able to rip down everything so fast. They're going to let that match play out, and you're going to see that destruction throughout the whole match. And, you know, with normal weapon balancing, he's right. You could have, a, you could have that change there. They had an earlier demo that showed the game running locally with no cloud power, and when a building started to crumble, the t frame rate tanked down to like five frames per second, and then they had it split screen with the Azure cloud uh, handling all of that destruction, that CPU processing, and uh, it was able to hold it at 30 like the whole time. Like, And that was on PC. That demo was on PC, so they were rocking really crazy tech. They took the servers offline and the best fucking gaming CPUs at the time were just dying. Like they yeah. couldn't keep up. It was pretty insane. So, so basically you're, you're getting like uh, the power of 20 different uh, processors helping you, you know, I don't want to do that for Titans of the cloud shit. I ain't even talking about that shit. No, 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 no. But, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're getting, you're getting a lot more physics based processing uh, with, with what Azure's going to do with Crackdown and all that stuff. So. Yeah, if I can just handle like little sections of each part of the city. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about, though, so I got to move it forward once again. Sorry. Can I'm I segue asshole. into something really quick, though, just real briefly? Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I got into the beta of um, NVIDIA's Cloud Gaming. Okay, and, thank you. And <laughs> I, 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 have, I have to say... Uh, they've come a long way with cloud gaming. I, I couldn't notice any type of lag, man. So um, cloud people that were thinking cloud gaming wasn't a, a, a viable few, a viable option, uh, I think you're going to be uh, See, Top Dog, that's it's the like, kind of stuff that's dangerous, Top Dog. You're just outright lie right there. That tech demo was scripted. You talk, What are you talking about? You're, talking, you're trying to take the physics scripting. What, all that stuff was in real time. Yeah. And they even let Destin Legary control the guy and blow up the building. So... Uh, I do want to know what you mean when, if you're meaning it's scripted as in this is a controlled environment, maybe that's what you should say instead, but, uh, that was three years ago. And from what I hear, it's working very well right now. So I want to get to what I really wanted to talk about with this because I'm hearing and, and shout out to those that are showing up today because YouTube's fucking dead. <laughs> uh, I'm hearing that crackdown is actually pushed back to 2019. No what? Yeah. So now, now just uh, you know I can't fucking say. Um, 
Now, now, of course, I'm not saying it is definitively, but for those that want to be up to date on everything that I think I know, I am telling you that this goddamn game is not going to be out for another fucking year. Wow. If, if that's the case, they better put a new coat of paint on it. Well, that's just that's what they've been doing. That's what my whole last video was about. Phil Spencer saying, hey, these franchises deserve more. I predict Halo and Gears getting another year of development time uh, as opposed to the normal two and a half, three year cycle uh, as well. So I think they're giving all their games more time. But Halo is already supposed to be out this year based on its normal life cycle. So next year, it'll have had four years. So Halo will be out next year. Gears uh, had two and a half years for Gears 4. They only, they only took two and a half years to make that game. So this next one, you're looking at more in a three and a half year dev cycle. Now, that's just my own thing. I think that's what's going to happen with Gears and Halo. They're going to give them an extra year. Halo uh, Crackdown, I'm here in this 2019. Uh, you know, I don't mean that in a disparaging way, but that's just what I'm hearing. I'm letting you guys know. Let me know what you think in the live chat uh, because that ain't easy to swallow there. So, what do you? What's the panel think about this? 2019, the fucking shit storm. Yeah, if this happens, if this game is not at E3, or if they if they announce it to be 2019 at yeah. E3, uh, or even storm. if they delay it by six fucking months to later this year, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a shit storm again around this fucking game. Yeah, I, I you know, I understand what Phil's saying, um, but at the same time, them them delaying it for another year. Like the game is already losing a lot of momentum. A lot of people are already freaking. That's no momentum. Game. And like and like like a, another year with damn right, kill the game unless it was the best looking game ever. You know what I'm saying? So they better know what they're doing. I, I hope they, I hope they strategize this well. They can't push it to 2019 without showing major gameplay at E3. Like that's just a real disservice to any any uh, game, any IP. You can't. Like they've treated Crackdown like nobody's ever treated any game ever. Like they said that they are pushing it to spring 2018. That window closes at the end of June. Uh, they mm -hmm. haven't said anything. The only marketing that exists for Crackdown 3 right now is a picture on the Xbox Game Pass um, promotion. Yeah, commercial, yeah. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And um, you ask you ask about Crackdown, you get absolutely no answer from anything other than Phil Spencer saying a month ago. The team has a plan in place. It won't be long. Now, that's the thing. When they say it won't be long, that's what throws me off of what I'm hearing from the person that I'm hearing this from. And I don't know, because I was hoping, and I was just almost sure that Crackdown was definitely going to be one of the big demos of C3, that they're going to blow people. Because my last video, you know how many comments I got? I didn't know this was Crackdown. This is fucking crazy. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's three years old footage, too. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe they can open the show with the, the most insane destruction and set it up to where it just looks so fucking cool and show that. But and then Phil says soon and all this stuff. But then I'm hearing, you know, a delay and then we're not hearing anything about it for, for obvious reasons. E3, as I've said before, I don't blame it for not saying nothing now. But but I also don't think it was in the Walmart leaks. No, it wasn't. And those Walmart leaks, to an extent, have already been proven to be true. Now, they did yeah. go in and say Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4 or 3. But my guess is, and this isn't just my guess, was, this has happened before, where the guy that wrote this stuff down, he went in and saw Gears of War. They don't give the exact title uh, to Walmart, the retailer. They just say Gears of War. Expect it this year. We've told you before, you can expect a spinoff this year. We've already said this on the show before this was even leaked. So my guess is the guy went in and just wrote Gears of War 5. He wrote Forza Horizon 5, the wrong one. But yeah. to a big extent, those leaks have been proven accurate. Crackdown 3 was not in those leaks whatsoever as anything on Walmart's radar. No, and, and Walmart's official response, they didn't even like deny it. They're like, oh, something in our system allowed those games to show, um, you know, we, you know, we don't know anything what's going to be happening at E3. They didn't even like really deny it. And just the fact that, you know, Rage 2 was on that list. And, you know, yesterday and yesterday, you know, we get Rage 2 news in a trailer and gameplay footage, you know, it just shows, yeah, that this Yeah, this and Bethesda like tweeted about it and said, dude. And then the Rage account tweeted about it. We knew that was real. Yeah. And, and uh, somebody else tweeted saying, oh, this is why we can't have nice things, you know? 
<laughs> it was yeah, one, of, one of the cool. companies. I can't remember which company it was, but it said this is why we can't have nice things. So. Cool. Underachiever has a super chat there. Uh, do you want to lead that one? Yeah, it's way up here. Hold on, because we got talking about crackdown for a minute. So, like I said, that's just one thing I'm hearing. Could be wrong. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. But I figured I'll let you guys know. I think if it happens, don't be that surprised. Hey, I think they just should just. I don't know. I, honestly, at this point, I, I think it's really irrelevant in a lot of people's minds already. Yeah. Well, of course it's going to be, but then they come out with some crazy shit, and there's yeah. a reason they're extending its dev budget and its uh, and all that stuff. I mean, I'd rather them make the game as good as possible. Honestly, we've said this before too. Like, but, make the game as good as possible, make it great because they didn't even mention what was that cult, the, the transforming car stuff. They didn't mention that before. We yeah. were thinking that wasn't yeah. even in the game. Like they were just launching it without that, and. You know, There's a lot of features that we thought were missing from the other original Crackdown games, but the yeah, the transforming cars is supposed to be more meaningful and more um, noticeable, I guess. Like more meaningful, meaning that the cars will do something different other than look really cool. Yeah. So and before it, they weren't like confirming or denying that it was even in the fucking game. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on with that game that's all behind the scenes. Yeah. It's all secret, like, you know, trench coat pulled over your nose. Like, it's just kind of really, really weird. And and I just like to tell you guys, like, there's two games that I'm looking forward to the most this year. And I know I'm going to sound like an idiot, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is my most anticipated game. And then Crackdown is the other one. And I'm, I'm really excited for all these other games. But those are my two, like, I don't know why Crackdown is, like, way up there on my list. But I just cannot wait to play that game. And it's just... The way they've treated it has just been like, come on. At the end of the day, if if they can produce what you know what they said they can with this game, uh, you know, and, and to show us a, a gameplay, a gameplay, actual gameplay, not a trailer of all of this destruction in action, and you know, and the graphics mm -hmm. are nice and crispy, and it's a it's a different experience that you know none of us gamers have played in quite some time. Then I think they can sell the game. It's 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 all on them. They just they just need to show what they have. Let me, I got to get to underachievers super chat here, but let me just close it by saying one thing. Everything that you guys, all of you that you've seen on crackdown, other than the people that actually got to stand there and play the game, everything you've seen is at 1080p on YouTube or shot off a freaking TV screen. They've <laughs> never shown us any 4k, um, render of that game so we've never actually see, a lot of people say it looks like trash it looks downgraded and crap but we've never actually got to see that game the way it's supposed to look so i mean you know what people can say what they want but it looks like fucking crackdown in 2018 to me possibly 2019 now so i mean it looks like crackdown would look to me so underachievers question is something that there was a big discussion today on social media about um paying or not paying for xbox live and it kind of got into the um the whole reasons why we pay for Xbox Live and why there's a paywall on PSN and, and Xbox. Underachiever asks, is cheating less prolific on consoles because of the nature of consoles being consoles, a closed system? Or are console fees just getting thrown at the prevention of cheating? Is that a whack justification? So I think what he's getting at is, do we pay for Xbox Live so we don't have to deal with cheaters because Microsoft takes that money and spends it to keep us in a safe environment? No, we don't, and we do have to deal with cheaters. It's worse on PC, but Ubisoft games run on Azure all the time on PC. PC games use what is essentially Xbox Live. So if you want to go play certain Ubisoft games, use dedicated servers on uh, Azure Cloud, uh, you're playing on Xbox Live servers. Um, and you're getting all those same security measures. I, I, I don't, and I have never agreed with paying online. I don't think that I should put in State of Decay 2 on my Xbox One and need to pay. And, you know, at this point, we've all got Xbox Live. It's like a non-thought. It's like paying for Netflix every month. No one gives a fuck, right? It's just an yep. expense that you accept, and most of us get it for way cheaper than 60 bucks. But I don't like the idea that I can boot that game up on my Xbox One and need to pay a monthly fee to play that with a friend, take that same Play Anywhere code, boot it up on my PC, and be able to play with those same friends for free. Yeah, that kind of sucks, man. I, I can't lie. <laughs> and not not kind of. It, it does suck. But and I not, think they're, if they're it were free, then we wouldn't even be talking about this. Cause they're it not going to be... get rid of it, though. It just, it, it, no, it, it, they're not going to. They're not going to get rid of it. And people, you know what? I will give them props for including games with gold, which they did because mm -hmm. of PS Plus. PS Plus started adding the games, and they had to compete. And that's why we tell people competition is key. 
But, you know, at least they're giving you some gains. Uh, you know, some people get some value out of those gains. But for me as a hardcore guy with like almost 500 games now, I buy everything that I want almost day one. And I'll buy it if I don't buy it day one in a sale, a sale way before the thing is on games with gold, if it even is ever on games with gold. Fonz, let me know what you think about this. Okay, yeah. Fonz. Is, okay. is he there? <laughs> With gold, you also get access to weekly sales of a dozen yes, that's what games every do, single do, week, do, do, which, do. which is nice for everyone that loves exclusive. It's exclusive <laughs> sales for gold. I mean, well, if we cool. didn't pay for Xbox Live, would they? They would still have sales, right? Do they, they just do. kind of put it under this umbrella? Like, here's your. But if you don't have Xbox Live Gold, you don't get those gold deals, which are you know can be ten to forty percent off typically. He's talking about the network security pretty much because it's a closed environment. You know, you've got that, you know, more of a protection there for, than, say, a PC gamer yeah. does. Yeah, mod the files and stuff, right? Maybe, yeah. I, think oh, that's yeah. A, I don't think yeah. that's got anything to do with paying them money, though. That's just no. the no, hardware, you know? The nature of a console. Mm -hmm. And they have to protect their platform because if, <laughs> because if a PC game is uh, overrun by hackers, uh, like PUBG does with, like, the Chinese hackers, you know, ruining the game you start getting people to leave and if xbox was overrun with hackers people would stop using the platform yeah that's one reason why i love the closed environment of a console yep. i you know that's one benefit i don't think it's got anything to do with that fee it's just the nature of a closed box like that they they can everyone's got the same damn hardware and software and they can control the situation so uh pc everyone could do whatever the fuck they want that's why they don't charge you on pc now uh, for Xbox Live because they can't. People will hack it and find a way around it. But you know the value is like Shady said, much up to you. Like if uh, either way though, to get more value out of gold, you have to spend more money buying more games on sale. So you have to kind of spend money to get more value. Uh, I'm not complaining. I take advantage of the sales all the time. But like Colt said, those sales are going to be there either way. They're only locked behind gold because gold is a thing. Yeah. So either way, I mean, it's 2018, and the only reason that we're paying to play online is because people find reasons to think that that's great. I do not think it's great, something I accept because I prefer console. And, um, and I don't Nintendo know. just joined the fray, too, so <laughs> it ain't going away. They found a revenue stream that is a hell of a revenue stream. And, uh, you know, if they can improve things and make things great and stuff and, and to keep things, in, you know, consistent – then it is what it is. I'm, you know, we're all taking an L at the end of the day, though. So, <laughs> what do you think, Fonz? Fonz, you yeah, keep yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I, I muted myself. Sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, I, about what exactly? The, the which which? Do you part? think it's? A, do you think paying for gold's cool or what? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I don't <laughs> pay for it. I mean, I, I don't look. I, I don't love it, but it's kind of the nature of the beast. You have to pay for it. It's like if you're on a console, that's what you got to expect. You got to pay to play on it. You do. you do. Do you guys think you get your money's worth with games of gold over the whole year? Yeah, yeah. I think I get my money's worth for sure. First of all, you know, it, it it's pretty reliable service. I know that doesn't really matter paying for it, but it is a reliable service. And you know what? <sighs> I would say at least four to five months out of the year, they, they give decent enough games, you know? And then, of course, you know, you got those extra discounts that you get on top of it. So so for, for me, it's worth it. And to be honest with you, being a console, you know, I, of course I play on PC too, but being a console player for years, I'm so used to it. So, you know, it is what it is. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You got guys rolled up in the ball. Yeah, I think I like it. You know, you got you got Lewis Peralta in the chat. He said, "Console dudes are so conditioned to pay to play online." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know we are. Yeah. Honest, we are. I'm a console dude, but that is, you know, I I kind of look at it as as should it be or have we just made excuses for it to be? And I think the <laughs> answer is the second half. I do see what Dee's talking about, and that's what I say. It it all varies if you download. You know, every game's with gold, and you play the fuck out of those games. You got your value in one month. Well, I mean, let's be realistic, D Batch. You ain't made a game in 16 years, first. And secondly, <laughs> most people don't download and play those play those games like crazy. I mean, what, do you see where I'm coming from, D? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to get $60 worth out of the 48 games they give you. And I think a lot of people can do that. But it's like I just got tabs for my truck yesterday. You know, it's like that that yearly fee, you know, it could be around 60 bucks depending on what state you're in. And it's like that you, you don't want to do it, 
You know, I always like put it off and I hope that no cops behind me, but I go in there and I take the L and I buy that stupid $60 little sticker that says 2019, you know, and, or 2018 or whatever it was. And I stick it on there and, uh, it's kind of, that's kind of how it is with consoles. It's so stupid that way, you know. It's something. Well, keep in mind, we have. don't have to pay it, but if you want to be a social gamer, you do. You can't even to. party chat without it, you know. And and another thing they need to fix, and I might do a video on this, you know, because who knows? You know me, I'll do a video. But um, like P- PlayStation doesn't have to pay for PS Plus to play free to play games like Fortnite. Like they have 20, 25 free to play games in their library. And they don't have to have that service to play those games, but Xbox does. So there's like a difference there where that's another thing where Microsoft needs to see that, take notice and make an improvement because competition is doing a better job. And I think we've talked about this enough. <laughs> I mean, I mean, just shout out to uh, Alan Savage in the super chat, by the way. Thanks so much, man. Uh, but, you know, to those watching, we're all on the same side here. Uh, you know, just because we disagree on certain things, it's not a big fucking deal. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I think it makes the show more interesting. Uh, you know, it is what it is. We all got our own opinions. I think the value varies from person to person. And, you know, if you're one of those people, that's great. You get more, like 800 bucks worth of games. If you play all of them, you're fucking making out like a fat rat, aren't you, Shady? Yeah, you are. It definitely are. And I want to throw out a little tip there that with gold, it works with game share. I don't pay for gold myself. My game share partner does, but I have access to all the benefits that gold yep. offers because of it. So anyone else out there with a game share partner, you only need one subscription to gold between the two of you. So this is very true. The only downside is I think you can't take advantage of the sales and all that, but just the sales. Uh, yeah, it's not really all that. Like I said, you got to spend money just to save money there. And that's kind of interesting logic. But I want to talk about the. <laughs> Four main games that Sony are focusing on. Fonz, I want you to leave with this. List these games out. Give us your opinion. Uh, they're, they have confirmed they're focusing on four titles this year, all of which we've already seen. Uh, what do you think about this? Well, we've got Death Stranding, and nobody knows what the hell that's about yet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just, so, just so, just before we continue, Kojima himself, last time he showed it off, I think it was PSX, said he doesn't know what kind of gameplay mechanics or gameplay it's even going to offer yet. Meaning he doesn't know if it's first, third person. It's going to be third. <laughs> you know that. That's but weird. He, 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 he didn't even know. Funny. Unless that was a broken translation or something. But that's uh, you know, that's kind of in the thing that's been talked about with this for a while. Hey, I mean, it could be fantastic or it could be, you know, dog crap. We'll It'll see. It'll probably be good. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you got throat babies in there. So <laughs> <laughs> Fonz loves those. Um, uh, also you have Spider-Man, of course, and everybody's waiting for Spider-Man. I can't wait for Spider-Man. So, uh, awesome game coming. And, uh, of course we have, uh, the last of us Two. the last of us Two. Everybody's waiting for that. That love the first game. So, um, that's going to be a big hit for him. And the last game, uh, what was the last game? It's not days gone. What was it? Um, <laughs> I don't remember either. Oh, go, uh, Ghosts of shiitake mushrooms. Ghosts of shiitake mushrooms. <laughs> Ghosts of Shishima. And Ghosts of Shishima, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this game. Yeah. So is IGN. See. So Saxon says they already gave it a 12 out of 10 on IGN. Jeez. Nice. That's hard to do. Yeah. That sounds fair. <laughs> but yeah, Ghosts of Shishima is, is one of the highlights that I really want to see. I can't believe I forgot that. Like I said, I'm under the weather today, but you know what? I'll be back to top form next week. Um, so would you yeah, say, though, that Fonz, that... that if you watched PSX and last E3, you're probably not going to see anything but maybe some new gameplay from oh, some of these games. Well, we'll we'll see some new stuff from from some of these games for sure. They supposedly they're going in depth with this stuff. That's what uh, Sean Layden had said on their latest blogcast for PlayStation. But um, he also mentioned that they're going to show, uh, you know, of course, multiplayer stuff, uh, uh, multiplats. I mean, and then you're going to have uh, indies, and he said some other announcements i don't know what the other announcements are but we do know that it's not the ps5 announcement guys because they did squash that rumor well i thought ps5 is already going out this year i mean i remember people saying last year it was going to be out this year is it not out uh, not yet dealer i, looked, I went yet. to walmart it's coming oh. it's coming <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is and it's just sold out everywhere oh my god so here's what you can expect bottom line is the shit you saw cg trailers from or real in engine, whatever they want to fucking call it, the cutscene graphics version, you're going to see gameplay from this year, right? So expect gameplay from Last of Us 2, expect gameplay from Ghost of Tsunami, expect gameplay from, <laughs> expect gameplay from uh, 
fuck's the other one? Death Stranding. And you probably see even more gameplay from Spider-Man. I, I got to say, I, I'm I'm not expecting gameplay from Death Stranding at all. Not if, not, no, it might not. It might not. I heard Ghost of Tsushima is like a 2020 game. So. Tiramisu. Yeah. So Tiramisu. <laughs> either way, though, I will say, though, that the gameplay these games are going to generate is going to hype a lot of people up and it's gonna, they're going to do their job. So, you know, Microsoft, uh, we'll have to see what they come with. But uh I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I think Kojima's going to walk out there and say, you know, uh, I haven't figured out whether I want third person or first person, but here's some more babies in jars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it'll probably be third person and it'll be a nice takeaway or a nice move away from uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, which didn't have his full, like, his magic touch. Yeah. It, it seems like they kind of pushed him away from that project, didn't they? Partway through it. I have no clue. I was confused from the second I started that fucking game. And speaking of confused, Michael Pactor says the next Gears and Halo will definitely be out before next gen. Good job, Michael Pactor. Uh, Water is wet. That's just in. Yeah, I mean, Gears of War, I think, might be a cross-gen game, 2020 maybe, but, you know, who knows? We'll see. Halo. If Halo 6 don't come out this year, Gears ain't coming until 2020. I don't see why they would put two massive IPs out, two of their tentpole uh, games out in one year instead of spreading them out over two and getting twice the hype and sales over over those two years, you know. So yeah, I, I think they're gonna they're gonna bust out a Halo Six at E3. I think they're gonna do. That. You think they're gonna tease it? I, I would yeah. think so too. I would think so too. But yeah. you never know. Apparently, there's not going to be any teasers for a lot of the stuff that's leaked through the SDK stuff. A lot of people forget that was an SDK leak not something official they don't want you to know about halo uh, fable 4 perfect dark or any of that stuff yet mech assault they don't want you to know about it they want to surprise I you asking i gotta keep asking though every time it's brought up who asked for perfect dark who asked <laughs> for that game i don't know but hopefully Top it does dark. something hopefully well you know what Fons, a cool following, Fons, let's let's go ahead and call it some some people yesterday people are like who asked for rage 2 now look at everyone they're like I yeah can't we didn't wait we didn't talk about that did we well, the the Walmart stuff was we kind of did, but uh, yeah, the the Walmart we can move on, and, and this is our kind of last thing. But the Walmart leaks with Rage Two obviously came out to be true. Uh, there's so much stuff in there though, and I accidentally deleted all my topics one day, so I, I lost all the details. I'm just gonna Minnesota. keep it 100, okay? Minnesota so in there. dealer makes mistakes, of course, everyone does. You're on a podcast. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Shady and I were talking a lot about Rage 2, and and I'm, I know we were all in agreement uh, in the panel that that first trailer on Monday was so so campy, cringy, cheesy, uh, all the other words that start with C. I, I have shotgun say. shells as fingers. <laughs> yeah, flipping <laughs> you off. Uh, yeah, really just, oh my gosh, just really bad. And I was expecting a great game, horrible uh, trailer, and then that gameplay trailer dropped this morning and shady tell us oh, what you think it was amazing like you yesterday after watching that trailer i was reaching for the guillotine lever until all of a sudden you know the catchphrase <laughs> gameplay reveal tomorrow oh what's this hold on hold on maybe not quite yet it's time so we waited and it was good it was a huge payoff i loved it i'm a huge fan of the first rage and uh, i think this is going to be fantastic really a huge ladies and gentlemen you just met an endangered species a legitimately huge fan of rage Doom no, I'm is one of the first big games that brought we both were in. huge fans of rage really rage no rage, rage was had, so good i, I didn't like the, the worst ending. rage had the worst 20 second like ending cutscene, but the game was really fun and i liked yeah. a lot of things that did and everyone knew that if rage just stepped it up a little bit more for a sequel it could be something more and this could be this could be great because i know a lot of us a lot of you guys in the chat probably really liked mad max and you like uh some of the things that avalanche studios has done with just cause like one and two three not so much right so I don't know. And with the, you know, you got id and you got the avalanche team that did Mad Max. I mean, you could see a pretty cool game. And from what I've seen so far, it looks really cool. Yeah. I'm not, I don't, I don't think it's going to be bad. I just want to see that same clip with no music. Here, I'll remix it for you. I couldn't stand that, that, that kind of, uh, I didn't like the music, but I do, I did like avalanche's last outing in Mad Max. I do believe that was our last game. And, uh, you know, I got hope for it. it I think it's definitely be better than Rage 1, which in some ways felt like a, a couple games glued together in some, some ways to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember going to get in that midnight when it came out. That's how <laughs> it was. 
And uh, I remember it looked good as fuck. I think it ran at 60 as well. So yeah, it does. Rage 2, I would have just called it Rage and rebooted it, but that's their decision. They went that way. Uh, Avalanche, I guess that's worth noting. They're not owned by Bethesda or anything, I don't think. I think they're a freelance studio. So I think Bethesda contracted this out. I'm not sure, though. So either way, uh, it's, it's a new game. There was so much other stuff in that leak, though, that Last of Us 2 and, and like we said, Gears 5, which I already explained earlier in the show, th- what's going on with that, and uh, Horizon. And, you know, there were some, some errors there. But I think most of that's accurate. And, uh, you know, they called this is where the rage thing came from a couple of days before the trailer came out. So... What's it's got to be accurate. There was actually a Just Cause 4 labeled on that leak, and Avalanche makes Just Cause. So if they're doing Rage, are they also doing that game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I heard earlier that there was something that went against the Walmart leak. So uh, Borderlands 3, I think, was in the Walmart leaks. And, yes, it was. And they're saying that that there's not going to be a Borderlands at the C3. So I think some of these titles, I think these titles are real. I don't think that means they're coming out this year if they are even listed. I mean, and you got to remember that Avalanche was brought in just to co-develop as well. So, you know, it's not all Avalanche Studios. And who's the um, other studio? Id. Id. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think it's a joint effort. I thought they were yeah. working on working on Doom. Maybe it's kind of like the relationship yeah. between Idos Montreal and Crystal Dynamics, where Idos Montreal are really doing all the work on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and then the janitor from Crystal Dynamics would come in and be like, "That looks like the last game," and he walks out, and then they say, "Hey, we collaborated." Well, that's why I'm saying with like just cause four being in the works or whatnot. I, I I'm skeptical on Rage Two. I really am because of the first game. Um, it wasn't for me. Um, this second game looks. I got to see more of it. Okay, not much of that gameplay in this little commercial thing they showed really um, pulled me in at all right now. Yeah, I, I want to see some perspective based yeah. gameplay that's well, kind of set up. More. They showed a lot of like the first person actual combat, but I noticed when I watched it the second time that you have like jump boots or something. You have some type of like leaping ability, like because he was the character would jump up and then like pound down on the top of a car. So you have some type yeah, of jump it looked system. like you had some powers or something. It's so. like you were BJ Bla- Blaskowitz there, maybe time too. So uh, as we continue and kind of head out, uh, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to keep talking about this for a little bit more, but, uh, you know, thanks for showing up. Those that did hit that like button. Uh, if you appreciate the show, if you, you know, you enjoyed what you heard, whatever, whatever, cringy, corny shit. Thank you guys. Uh, any other thoughts on the Walmart leak? Any other games that was in there that kind of caught your eye, stuff like that? Well, I, I like the Mech Assault and, and the Splinter Assault. And the fact that some of these games might not be coming out this year, they could be getting announced at E3 for like, you know, a 2018 release. Just like I said uh, previous, you know, I, I pre order my stuff on Amazon. So sometimes these games, you know, after E3, you can pre order them on Amazon, even though they're not coming out for, you know, for quite some time. Like I already have Death Stranding pre ordered for like half price and stuff. And that game's not coming out for like a couple of years. So, mm-hmm. Fonz, anything that caught your eye at all? Um, Assassin's Creed did, and I, it just made me want to vomit. <laughs> It's not even, you you mean, fucking like, loved you know. Origins almost the whole time, and then you you're like, oh yeah, I forgot to do side missions. I'm low uh, level. No, the end the ending of that game is terrible, terrible. Mm. Uh, spoiler alert, Shady. What about you? I'm looking forward to seeing more from Beyond Good and Evil Two. I've been watching a little bit of the Dev Diary stuff that Ubisoft has put out, and that game is mind blowing on the tech that they are using for for that game. It's it's insane. If anyone hasn't seen it, go look up some of the footage they've released over the last year. It's it's an, in, intense. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's right. That game does look good, man. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, it'd definitely be the stuff that I know I can play soon. So Horizon, I'm interested to see what they're doing there, but I'd like them to make kind of a change to kind of change it up a little bit in some way. The gear spinoff, I'm interested to see. Uh, I would also, I wouldn't mind getting the Gears War Ultimate Edition too. Gears 2, I really liked, and I really wouldn't mind uh, updating that, kind of like the Ultimate Edition of the first one. But I don't know. It really, uh, you know, let us know what you think in the chat, in the comments when the video uploads. Thanks for showing up, guys. We appreciate it. Once again, hit the like button. We're heading out, guys. Starting with outros. Uh, God, I need a Red Bull. Uh, D-Batch, let us know where we can find you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me at Twitter at D underscore Batch. And, of course, on YouTube at D-Batch. YouTube at d You put out any videos lately? Uh, last week, I put out some videos. Uh, this week, um, I'm going to be putting out that Oculus Go review. Um, I just built a Ryzen 2200 and 2400G, so I'll probably do some benchmark videos on that. 
And uh, next week, I will be getting my C8 and my Q9, so I can't wait to do those reviews. Hey, uh, hey, D. What's up? You know that uh, that OLED still ranked higher on ratings, right? Yes. The, the, you know what? If uh, Let's go briefly into that. OLED, <laughs> OLED still will win overall picture quality. Oh, However, the Q9 has really closed the gap. But as uh, It's also way more expensive, too, though, right? Yeah, it is more it's expensive, good, right? But it's it's more expensive for the gaming features. For for gaming, it, it blows the uh it, it blows the C eight out of the water. I thought they both had like an eight point seven in gaming. No, no, no. For for gaming, because you got variable refresh rate, you know, it has like seven milliseconds response time in gaming on that. Yeah, team. I mean that's <laughs> input lag is so so close there though. I don't know. I would be willing to debate this for a little bit. I just love the infinite contrast ratio. It, you know, if you just got an OLED, don't feel bad. That's what I'm trying to say. It's still ranked higher on ratings overall. Same gaming score, slightly higher latency. Uh, and it doesn't have the blank frame insertion. The C seven doesn't, but I think they put that in the C eight for gaming and stuff but yeah you know. also too they improved they improved the hdr game mode it's 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 vastly better than the uh 2017 models it's a lot brighter it's not it's you don't have to do all these crazy fucking tweaks mm -hmm. to, to, to get it to show proper hdr so they, they, they did make improvements like i'm not gonna say the uh, 2018 model is not a great tv it's a fantastic tv and overall At this you're level you're literally talking about the best tvs in the world so yeah yeah but but LCD and uh, Samsung TVs have come a long way to, to, to narrow to, to close the gap, but of course OLED is still king. All right, uh, thank you so much, D. Uh, Fonzarelli, man, thanks for kind of sitting there and dying. I know you're sick. Hey, no problem, man. Where can uh, people find you? Yeah, you guys can find me at J Fonzarelli on Twitter and at J Space Fonzarelli, two R's, two L's. And uh, yeah, anyways, uh, great show. And uh, thanks to the chat and uh, people listening afterwards. Uh, thanks for putting up with all of this uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fonz is, is going is going through it today. Uh, Cole, what's been going on, man? Where can people find you? Oh my gosh, I've got like an hour left of God of War, and Dealer wouldn't let me play while we're doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, it's been so difficult for me to find time to play any games like the past couple weeks so uh thanks for being patient with me guys uh you can find me on at colt eastwood on twitter and youtube go check out my last two videos um i cover e3 for sony and i cover e3 for microsoft and uh, they're pretty cool videos i think to watch kind of get you excited and everybody take all this leak crap just uh, with very little weight because i think we're all going to be surprised at both shows sony says they're going to concentrate on four games i think they have a lot more to show and there's a lot to be excited about i so. think they lie yeah they lie <laughs> they lied to me so yeah get excited guys we have a uh, what three weeks until e3 you know a little over three weeks and yeah let's, yeah let's well do it. uh yeah go and check out cold slash videos uh and shady man thanks for joining us yet again man hey where can people find you once more where's my problem we're gonna get you I just want to say a big thanks to everyone for coming out and spending some of the most precious commodity we all have, a little bit of time. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. You can find uh, me at The Sesh Empire on Twitter. It's The Sesh Empire, S-E-S-H. There's no spaces there. Come on down. We like to have a good time and keep it fun. Yep. And once more, guys, thanks for checking it out. Uh, you know, we appreciate any feedback, any comments, any suggestions, anything you can think of. Type it down below. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, yeah. And we're out, guys.